Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. Today we're going to be covering corruption within bodybuilding. Let's get it. The recent corruption in bodybuilding has been uncovered by a set of articles published by the Washington Post's Desmond Butler. Butler was the son of one of the directors of one of the first strength documentaries, Pumping Iron, which where Arnold just goes around just lifting heavy ass weight, talking about how much he loves getting that pump, if you know what I mean. Recently, Butler's dad passed away, and after he passed away, one of his friends came up and that's active within the bodybuilding community, came and talked to Butler about some of the things that were happen happening underneath the covers of the bodybuilding world. Some serious stuff that needs to be uncovered, and so Desmond decided to take it upon himself to do some investigative journalism to see what he could uncover and see if these claims were true. He ended up interviewing over a hundred people, almost all within the sport and know what the interworkings of the professional bodybuilding league in America, the IFBB and the NPC, the amateur leagues on the underworkings of both those and talk to a lot of people, both who have competed and the family members of those who have competed and those who know the sport really well. Before we dive into some of the controversy that has happened, I think it's important that we go back to step one and clarify what bodybuilding is. So originally bodybuilding was formed as a sport to see who could come up with the best figure possible. There was no strings attached. It was come in pretty lean, trying to find the best physique possible at the time. It really didn't start catching on until you know, the 60s and 70s when those golden era bodybuilders were coming through. So as these athletes start coming through the bodybuilding world and once the popularization of uh, PEDs, the performance enhancing drugs has become popularized over the past half, half century or so is when we start running into issues within the bodybuilding space. And the main issue through these PEDs is that people are dying. More people have died doing bodybuilding shows at a high level than any other sport in the world. That's a mainstream sport, I should clarify. Any other mainstream sport in the entire world. Think of the most violent sports you can think of. In my mind, what pops up is professional football, very violent. UFC, you're literally trying to kill your opponent like in a match. In actuality, that's what you're trying to do is to inflict as much harm as you can to get a better score or to knock them out, which is just a step on the way to finalizing the kill and killing them. So like that is your goal is to just bludgeon them as hard as you can. In my mind, those are some of the most intense, violent sports that I can think of. Race car driving is another one that comes up, but not... It's more self-inflicted by the way that you're getting in that vehicle or you're on that motorcycle and you're going as fast as you can and, you know, you slip up. Compared to bodybuilding, those are like playing with like a Nerf gun. So many less deaths, so less frequent deaths. It's If you compare to the amount of people who compete in the sport compared to bodybuilding, the numbers are just so damning in favor of the other sports compared to bodybuilding. And you think to yourself, you know, these people are in great shape, like they're super lean, they, they look great. You're under that health and fitness halo, which helps you go under the guise of something that's really healthy and everyone should be doing. And this is what the optimal human should be looking like. And that's simply not the case. The new up and coming PED to enhance the performance on day of competition are diuretics. Diuretics are anything that draws liquid from the body. Getting rid of this excess liquid is crucial for a physique to remain at its peak, hypothetically. Now, there's been studies done on the dry claim or trying to remove all that liquid from the body, not just from the muscle tissue itself, but also from the blood. So when th these athletes are taking these diuretics, it's not only taking it from the muscle, which is where they want to take it, but it's also taking it from the blood. But there's studies that show that judges can't even differentiate between who is drier objectively than who is not. So even under the guise of trying to create the best physique possible, it doesn't even matter. 
you could put the same person out whether they took diuretics or not and generally they'd have a close to the same physique according to this study and when you compound these issues of having a large heart where you're all going to be already going to be prone to having these issues with pumping blood and having low blood blood pressure through having this thick thick blood and you compound these issues together you start to get some fatalities in people who otherwise would be relatively healthy and going back to the original purpose of or the original starting point of bodybuilding a lot of these physiques wouldn't even be classified as something that's aesthetically pleasing or exuding vitality or exuding health not that sports always need to maintain the same goal of the big of the beginning like if you see in football if you went back to 1890 when the game started and you brought you know today's nfl back to there they look like complete two completely different games but in the end you're trying you know the faster people are going to be better the bigger people are going to be better the game evolves whereas in bodybuilding it's always going to be subjective it's always going to be i prefer that physique over that physique and if it gets guided by a certain group of people who are pushing for a certain physique and in order to get that physique you do have to put your body through an otherwise super deadly process to me at least it doesn't seem like that is a super a sport that i want to compete in that's not something that i want to be doing long term because of the detriment to my health and because you know why would i why would i want to exude a physique that looks and one thing that baffles my mind is that a lot of the peds that these athletes are using are not even safe for human consumption you know a lot of these and I'll, I'll list them on the screen right here a lot of these peds are used in veterinarian offices for horses or for different animals and when a ped is not used for humans in medical uses so we're talking about the pharmaceutical industry who it's a multi-billion dollar industry when they're not even issuing these peds to people who have significant mu muscular atrophy these people who cannot keep on muscle if they're not issuing some of these peds to those people to put on muscle and maintain muscle why would you think it's safe for yourself to put that in your body at a dose a consistent dose that is going to leave your body in a state that is not going to be healthy when you get into your 40s and 50s i mean look at some of these bodybuilders that are passing away so early because of these physiques that we want to create from them and i i get it it's their choice and i'm not saying it's the bodybuilders fault at all everyone who is in the sport where people are dying way more frequently than anyone would imagine is at fault anywhere from the trainers the coaches the athletes the event organizers everyone is at fault here for letting the sport fall and guide in this direction and you can't blame them right now bodybuilding is as popular as it's ever been there's significant monetary compensation for athletes who are willing to go the next mile and it's it's at a sad place where in order to get to the top where you can make it monetarily advantageous enough to where you can quit your day job or you can just do this full time that you need to put all these drugs into your body in order to maintain and get that physique for solutions in the end it always comes down to where the money is here comes the money here we go money talk. and the only ways that we can delineate where the money is coming from and the sport itself is guiding the sport and evolving the sport in a different direction for example a couple of years ago when arnold said you know i want to have a more classic physique i don't want this mass monster of a ronnie coleman or a jay cutler to dominate bodybuilding anymore i want this classic physique a v v-shaped taper more like a chris bumstead or a or an arnold and guess what over the years more and more people are being guided to that classic physique so i think it really starts at the top and honestly the event organizers and the, and the judges need to be held accountable for guiding people 
to this physique. At the end of a bodybuilding show, judges will tell the competitors what they need to work on, what they need to improve. And the only way that we can guide the, the sport away from a physique that's going to require all these hormones and all these PEDs injected into the athletes is to guide it away from that. In order to do so, we really, as a society and as a fitness culture, need to stop glorifying this absolutely hunk of mass that are professional enhanced bodybuilders. And in order to drive this change, it really needs to start at the top. And I mean the tippity top, and we're talking Arnold himself. Arnold needs to come out and say what the sport is right now and what it's trending towards is not what the sport should be. The sport should be a outlet for people to express themselves through a physical art form that cannot be repli replicated in any other way, shape, or form. Bodybuilding is super cool. You know, let's create. Uh, a physique, a really an art form where people can train, develop themselves over time, over a long time period through proper nutrition, proper recovery, taking their time to craft this artful physique instead of what it is right now, which let's get there as soon as possible in order to pack on that, that much muscle as soon as possible, ruin our health long term and really create a space that's unhealthy in a lot of different ways. I don't think that's unconceivable for Arnold to say over the course of the next couple of years. He's the one who's going to be able to have that influence within the sport to guide it in the direction that it should go. This is a similar take to what you what I've seen in videos by Omar Esof and I just I just couldn't couldn't agree more. Arnold is has so much influence within the bodybuilding space that if he posted on his in, Instagram or if he, he did went to the heads of these shows and he said, you know, we can't have this anymore. Like I like I'll separate myself from the IFBB pro. Like I won't go like I won't have bodybuilding at my show anymore. Or if I do, it's going to be natural. Or if I do, I'm going to judge it this way. It's really going to guide the sport in a direction that's going to be more healthy and honestly a lot safer for the competitors long term. Thanks for tuning in for my first video of my corruption series. I'm going to be posting a video about corruption and different strength sports and different fitness uh, endeavors over the next couple months. So if you want to see those, make sure to subscribe down below. And in the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what this means to bodybuilding or potential solutions that we could use going forward in the space to make a sustainable, healthy culture within bodybuilding. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Peace.